Hey everyone, time to look at four news stories and of course pay them the same level of respect and dignity that Jeff Bezos has for his workers' rights or the tax authorities. First of all to Spain, where they've issued a new curfew to prevent the spread of coronavirus. The government has said that they don't want anyone to catch it, although well, they might have said that they didn't want any Juan to catch it. I think I remember a story actually about the King of Spain being sequestered on his private jet until his COVID-19 result came back, though as the saying goes, quote, the rain in Spain stays mainly on his plane. Anyway, Spain is now about 740 deaths per million, which largely means that it's almost at herd immunity stage, so I guess it'll work by default no matter what happens, and if not, then the summer's over, so the hotels and bars were closing down for the winter anyway, a case of the Spanish government saying, heads I win, tails you lose. Looking elsewhere in Scotland, there are actually dozens of islands and regions with not a single case of COVID, uh, but England already has regional lockdowns, so Nicola Sturgeon's been forced into a national one in order to remain contrary. Her display of the art of contrariness and contradiction is quite a thing to behold recently, actually, uh, like wanting to be an independent country that's part of the EU and which is also carbon neutral yet reliant on an oil industry. Those are leaps of logic that make Alex Salmon's legal defence look pretty reasonable and airtight. Meanwhile, there's a quote here by the Bishop of Paisley saying that he wants a 24-hour COVID circuit breaker put in place in Scotland to prevent a, quote, digital Christmas. So like many, I feel sorry for his nephews that were expecting an iPad or an Xbox from Santa. There was also a presidential debate this last week between Mr Trump and Mr Biden, which was really, really good if you're fond of being really underwhelmed by things. Mr Biden accidentally let slip that he's actually quite keen to dismantle the oil industry, but overall, like many sequels, it was a disappointment. Ultimately, it does seem strange to me that the two of them continue to sell their position to the electorate when it's becoming clearer every day that this election is actually going to be decided by a bunch of judges sitting in a handful of state supreme courts. Those are the people you should be talking to. You know, there's a very good podcast called Fiasco, which I'd recommend listening to for a good reminder of how Florida played out 20 years ago, for those of us unfortunate to remember it. And finally, this is a beautiful story I read on the BBC's website, and I think it sums up the United Nations more than anything I've ever read. The story is about nuclear disarmament and the UN's attempt to ban nuclear weapons by very strongly written letters, and it, it talks about how Honduras has become the 50th country to ratify a treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons. So it's now going to come into force in 90 days' time. Scary stuff. Uh, the story then continues that, quote, what it will actually achieve remains in doubt because the five recognised nuclear powers have not signed the accord. So there we go then, it's essentially like a bunch of kids at college holding a vote and then writing a letter demanding that the government puts an end to, to war and racism and money and petrol. Actually no, that's a letter from Nicola Sturgeon again. Anyway, see you next week if you like these, click subscribe.